doing something today is effortless. Want to check your weight? Just step on a scale, read the numbers, and you'll instantly know how many pounds or kilograms you are. In the marketplace, it's common to see merchants using scales like these to measure goods. But measuring weight wasn't always this simple. Before modern scales, people relied on balance scales. These are the simplest type of scales, featuring a beam balanced on a central pivot with two pans suspended on either side by strings. Balance scales date back thousands of years. Ancient Egyptian paintings from 2000 BC even depict their use. Amazingly, they're still used in some less developed regions today. In my home country, Myanmar, small vendors selling fish, meat, and vegetables often rely on balance scales. Unlike digital scales, there are no numbers to read. You place the goods in one pan and counterweights in the other until the beam balances perfectly. A small tongue in the center shows which way the balance tips. By carefully choosing the weights, you can get an approximate measure of the goods. And out of generosity, the vendors often add a little extra to tip the balance in favor of the customer. However, balance scales have a significant drawback. When measuring heavy or bulky objects, you need equally heavy counterweights. Imagine trying to weigh a large bag of grain. A small balance scale wouldn't suffice, so you'd need a much larger, sturdier scale. On top of that, you'd have to create additional sets of heavy weights, which would be costly. And then there's the effort of physically lifting and placing both the object and the counterweights onto the pans. It's not the most efficient method, but people did build larger balance scales for weighing heavy goods. One way to reduce the need for heavy counterweights is by shifting the fulcrum to one side, effectively turning the scale into a lever. This design, known as the steelyard scale, dates back as far as balance scales. The lever principle is one of the oldest mechanical concepts and can be found in many tools, even in something as simple as a nail clipper, where it's easier to press the lever than directly push the blade. In a steel yard scale, the counterweight can be moved along the beam to balance the load on the other side. The weight is multiplied by its distance from the fulcrum. For example, if the counterweight is 10 times farther from the fulcrum than the load, it balances out 10 times the weight. Let's break down a simple lever system. Imagine a beam with a movable fulcrum. When the fulcrum is in the middle, both sides need equal weight to balance. But if you shift the fulcrum to one side, it takes less weight on the longer side to balance a heavier load on the shorter side. This is because the weights are proportional to the distances from the fulcrum. The relationship is expressed by the equation W1 times D1 is equal to W2 times D2, where W1 and W2 are the weights, and D1 and D2 are the distances from the fulcrum. This is known as the law of the lever. Now back to the steelyard scale. If the fulcrum is positioned so that the beam has a 10 to 1 ratio, the weight of the load can be balanced with just one-tenth of that weight as a counterbalance. The scale's beam is marked with measurements. So if you use a one-pound counterweight, you can slide it along the beam until it balances the load and read the weight directly from the scale. Still, this method isn't the most convenient for weighing large, heavy objects. This was the challenge that Thaddeus Fairbanks faced in the 1830s. At that time, in the United States, balance scales and steelyard scales were the only available options. Fairbanks, along with his brother, had started a manufacturing company called E&T Fairbanks in 1823, producing stoves, wagons, and plows. Recognizing the limitations of existing scales, Thaddeus invented the platform scale. His innovation allowed an entire wagon to be driven onto the scale, and the weight could be measured using much smaller counterweights. This invention revolutionized weighing 
and his company, Fairbank Scales, became a leader in scale technology. It still operates today. In this video, we'll be exploring one of the most popular types of platform scales, originally invented by Thaddeus Fairbanks. While this 3D model might not exactly match the original Fairbanks design, the core mechanisms remain the same, and that's what we'll focus on. This platform scale is the predecessor of many modern digital platform scales you see today. The platform scale has four wheels for easy movement to the weighing location. The flat portion, called the platform, is where the object is placed for weighing. The scale's beam must be balanced, centering between the beam locks. Counterweights are added to a hanging pan called the counterpoise. These weights are typically stored on the beam support and have specific cutouts. When placed on the counterpoise, the weights help balance the beam. The weights are marked with two numbers. The larger number represents the weight they balance out when placed in the counterpoise, while the smaller number indicates their actual weight. From this, we can deduce that this platform scale has a weight ratio of 100 to 1. This means that if we place a five pound weight on the counterpoise, it can balance out 500 pounds on the platform. For more precise measurements, there is a sliding poise on the beam. The beam is marked from zero to 50 and the poise can be moved to add extra weight. For example, if the poise is set to 20, an extra 20 pounds is added to the balance, giving us a total weight of 520 pounds. Platform scales can have different weight ratios and units, so it's important to know these details before weighing anything. Now, let's understand what allows a weight ratio of 100 to 1. First, the platform is secured by a locking pin underneath, which prevents it from sliding. Underneath, there are two levers, the long lever assembly and the short lever assembly both pivoted at the corners of the frame. These levers are connected by a simple linkage at the center. The long lever extends toward the back and is connected to a steel yard rod assembly, which is linked to one side of the beam. The frame is usually made of cast iron, with the pillar sometimes made of wood or cast iron as well. The beam is suspended from the beam support, which is placed between the pillar and the cap. The beam support, also made of cast iron, holds the combined weight of the platform and the smaller weights. The beam lock assembly is bolted to the cap and provides a visual window for centering the beam during balancing. It also prevents the beam from bouncing up and down as goods are loaded onto the platform. While this setup provides leverage, similar to a steelyard scale, it alone doesn't account for the 100 to 1 weight ratio. The key to achieving this ratio lies in the two lever assemblies. To better understand, let's simplify this with a lever diagram. The platform rests on top of the levers and we'll label the distances involved. Starting with the beam, if we place a counterpoise weight, WC, on it, we can write an equation where WC multiplied by distance, A, equals the tension, T, on the steelyard rod multiplied by distance B. This gives us the force acting at the end of the long lever assembly. The weight on the platform, W, is split between W1, which acts on the short lever assembly, and W2, which acts on the long lever assembly. The weight W1 also influences the long lever at the center connection, so we need to calculate that effect. Unlike a balanced beam, these two levers have forces acting on only one side of the fulcrum, making it impossible to write a balanced equation. Instead, let's consider the short lever assembly. To find the force at the end of the lever Z due to weight W1 at a distance F, imagine a torsional spring at the fulcrum. The lever rotates under W1's weight, and to achieve the same degree of rotation, at the end of the lever, a smaller force 
would be needed due to the greater distance. This relationship is written as W1 times F is equal to Z times D, and Z can be found as W1 times F over D. Now, let's write an equation for the long lever assembly. T times C is equal to Z times E plus W2 times G. By substituting Z and T and solving with basic algebra, we get W is equal to WC times AC over BG. Also note that in this platform scale, F is equal to G and D is equal to E. The final equation means the platform weight equals the counterpoise weight multiplied by the ratio AC over BG. For a 100 to 1 weight ratio, AC over BG must equal 100. Here, A over B is the distance ratio of the beam, and C over G is the distance ratio of the long lever and platform. If both ratios equal 10, we achieve 100 to 1. If one ratio is 8, the other must be 12.5. Manufacturers each design their scales differently, but this general principle applies. If you prefer not to dive into equations, think of it this way. Since both sections have the same distance ratios, we can move the short lever assembly to align W1 with W2, making the entire platform weight act on the long lever's point, giving us the same final equation. Now that we understand how a 100 to 1 weight ratio is achieved using compound lever systems, let's consider some practical details. In actual designs, the levers aren't uniform, and the beam has a curved hook at one end with the counterpoise hanging from the tip. To balance the beam, adjustable weight is added to the other end and can be adjusted by this screw. And the hanging counterpoise may have a compartment underneath for small adjustment weights. There's also a screw at the end of the long lever assembly to adjust the distance ratio. These components allow for precise calibration of the platform scale. The sliding poise on the beam is also calibrated, so when it's at zero, it adds no weight, and when it's at 50, it adds 50 pounds. Additionally, the pivot points are designed with knife edge contact points to create a precise fulcrum and minimize friction during movement which enhances the accuracy of the scale. One important thing to note is that with a 100 to 1 weight ratio, a difference between 100 and 200 pounds will result in only one unit of movement on the beam. This reliance on visual centering makes the scale prone to imprecise measurements. While platform scales can handle heavy loads, they sacrifice precision, making them better suited for weighing bulky objects where an error of 5 to 10 pounds won't significantly affect the price. Now that you've seen the simple yet ingenious engineering behind the platform's scale, you can appreciate the role it plays in trade and commerce. Even in some parts of the world today, these scales are still used for weighing various goods. It's fascinating how, even without advanced technology, humans were able to solve problems with the tools they had. Today, we have digital scales with high precision, but we should never forget how far we've come and the hard work that got us here. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more interesting technologies that humanity has developed to solve problems, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon, and become an active partner in spreading knowledge to everyone. Your support helps me create more amazing and high quality videos. Feel free to comment with topics you're interested in, and I'll see you in the next video.